I'm a consistent, curious person. The, the consistency of my curiosity and how I did with that, I think is really shaped in how the practice of being an actor is um, because it's an embodied practice. And when you want to sh change something in your way of acting, you need to change something in yourself. And there is no way of not doing that. And I think that being very consistent in that has allowed me to now, like first to move from being um, an actor to be a, a director, from moving from being a director in theater to do more and more experimental work, and now to move in, to be in the position of a composer. And I think all this movement has come out of a consistent curiosity and a very consistent way of letting me affect my body and my way of understanding the world by the things that I'm researching and exploring. And yeah, I think that is a possible answer. Well, my first uh, significant contact, contact with art, I think I was a child actor. So I started uh, performing and being professional in a way when I was uh, very, very young, when I was nine years old. So it was an after school program in the school. And I just went. Like, I think was not a, I guess was more a need of a, do having some kind of after school program for, for my, my parents, but I really, I really like it. So it was coming from, from my desire to go, not only that day after school, but then say, ah, I want to go on Saturday. So that was a special day. And, and also I want to perform and do these shows and, and it was in the in my neighborhood, so a lot many kids from the neighborhoods also were were there. I think I'm the only one that continues in the arts field, but um, but yeah, I think that was my first significant contact with with art, immediately doing things, uh, and that for me was very very important and I think has influenced my way of working because of course um, starting working as an actor as a child can, can be difficult but in this group that I was part we were also making our own works so it was a very hands-on uh, way of working and and creating and expanding imagination so I I think that was very very special and that in a way shift or create the way that I approach creation since then I approach creation um, in, in different ways in part at this moment uh, I'm shifting because as my work is becoming more and more sound based and music based, I think it's a very different process of creating that was before that, that was cre creating uh, performances and theater shows. And also it's shifting because I was used to work with, um, with an ensemble of actors. So we were always presenting something and already creating something and was a kind of a, a flow. And now I'm becoming more like, okay, I have an idea and a concept and I develop myself and then I, I meet an ensemble. So it's shifting. And more in general, I think it's, it starts with a question. Like I, it's something that I want to, to know more about. Uh, that, that can be a formal question, like a question about aesthetics or of, 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 of form, 
or like in this case, okay, I, I, I haven't, it's more about the subject, the theme, like on how he's in this case of ways to listen to a river, how, um, yeah, history and, and politics relates to climate change. And, and then the, the music, the sound com, comes as a, way, as a way of exploring that subject. But it's not always that, that process. Sometimes it's, okay, I want to create, it's more, more about the form that I start. The creation process has, in my case, yeah, I, I can recognize a series of, of steps. Uh, I think a first step at the beginning, there is a moment of, um, of fascination with the um, different materials. And then there is a second step that is trying to how this material articulates. It's more about the craft. And for me, that is a very, very, a very important moment. It's not like, okay, now I have to, to wave, it's not only about waving, but in, in the process of waving those elements is where the piece appear and the, the work can shift totally from what I was trying to, to do in the moment of putting these pieces together, the, um, the, the work start to emerge and that can shift totally. And that is a, always a difficult negotiation with myself or the people involved in the process. Because it's like, I can feel that the, the, the material is asking things. And my work is to give what the material needs. And, and material can be not only, in this case, musical notes or uh, field recordings, but um, also the, with the work, we're working with the performers or the, the musicians. It's like, okay, how the, the, the performer is asking something, sometimes without words, and I need to give space to that need. In this way of working that I was mentioning before, it also has a, the, it brings also their own difficulties, the, their own blocks, <laughs> way of, because Sometimes it becomes um, too micro, so you can stay too long working in a, in a very small part, like in, um, yeah, in a, a very small fragment and not necessarily get obsessed, but trying to find a way there. That can create a lot of frustration in one hand from a personal point of view, but also in terms of Production, like it's not really productive to spend too much, too much time in a very small part. So I think, and to avoid that, when I can identify that I'm getting there, I think what I try to do is to go back to the structure and to, and I think there is always an answer in the structure. And, 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 and having a, as much as possible an overview and, and trying to understand how, yeah, shifted from the micro to, to the macro. That I think that would be the, the easy way of explaining. And then from the structure, trying to find the, find the way out of this moment of blocking. Blocking moments is sometimes some moments of, um, yeah, of brain exhaustion. And I think that is the most um, blocking thing. I don't have many tools on how to do, deal with brain exhaustion or, or, yeah. Yeah, sometimes I try to go walk running or like to have some air, but sometimes I just keep pushing that. Of course it's a, worst strategy possible. Sometimes it's very useful also to, to take a break. If, if that possibility is there, to just leave the thing and come back later. And, and, and that 
it's very it's a double has a double benefit in a way not only in terms of giving mind space but also then you have fresh ears to listen to what what was there um, i think that is very important in the movement from argentina to the ne netherlands my practice made a, a huge transformation and i think it's not only related with moving to the Netherlands, I, I think it's also um, a shift that started before and, and having the opportunity to start in the Netherlands with a blank, um, uh, yeah, blank space in a way, because, okay, it's like starting over, made possible to allow myself to make some decisions into, okay, um, and, and because I was more focused in performance and theater before and deciding, okay, I'm not going to work anymore with the, or not anymore, for a time, <laughs> or the, um, in that field and, and not working with theater performers and try to start working with the musicians. I don't think it would have been possible being in Argentina to make that decision just just because you are in the already in a flow and sometimes it's uh, it's very difficult to put the brake and shift it. and when in the in the in the movement of being a new country in a totally new context where also you have to introduce yourself to this context it's easier to make that move that's how i feel and also then the pandemic where for two years there was not possibility at all of doing theater and it was always and there were possibilities but always cancelled and always it was an extremely frustrating moment to do theater and performance so but at the same time it gave me a lot of time to think and to learn and to make music and to to make that that leap and so it was kind of i came to do i did a master <laughs> and then i have a two-year music master or something like that to because it was what in two those two years basically i learn i study i compose i made i made music trying to to make possible this this leap i think the the movement for me, it's very, very clear, like moving from more conventional theater to um, more concert-like performances that are also a bit strange as concerts, but let's say, and moving from working with um, theater actors or uh, performers <laughs> um, to working with musicians. But also that also reflects a shift on how I think in the, the experience of uh, attending a performance. It's not only a, a shift from disciplines, but on how I think about the experience of the audience and what I want to create for them or with them. I found a lot of freedom in this new form for me. Because I think this, this um, shift for me was coming in the need, was coming from the need of telling certain stories, dealing with certain subjects that I feel that to do that with theater um, performance, I didn't have the, the tools to be deal with that um, and suddenly I can dive in these very extremely complex subjects and I feel that I have the tools to 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 bring the audience to the subjects and to have a, um, an exchange about it 
in music and in theater i i, I would i feel that to do that in theater would be a, I, I would make a horrible piece boring and and too i don't know like the kind of theater that I, that I don't like and especially i don't know how to do that well a documentary theater is not something that i know how to do and in music i think maybe because i've i have a, a more fresh relationship with it i feel that i i can deal with these subjects better the most important thing for me is to meet the human that person that is there and i think the, the tools that i that i develop working with actors i can in that human level i think i can totally i use the same tools i think and hopefully I, I, <laughs> it works um but i i trust that it, I, it works like because i i think that that sensibility i develop i i trust in, in my skills then there are the specificities of the um, disciplines and the way that for from starting from education and so on that the different disciplines work and i think that i am still learning there is something about in the rehearsal space how to find a precise way of giving directions instructions that is also a matter of having the of create a, a common language if i would have a, a traditional training in music like going to the conservatory we would have a shared language but also that would mean that people can get in a routine so because you share the language and and it's difficult to listen differently in between the words and uh, so i think now we're in i mean this quite interesting place where i i have some common words with the musicians but also not and in this failure of communication exists the potential of listening differently and of uh, also the potential of um interesting uh, interesting mistakes or happy 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 failures in a way of because of this miscommunication and to achieve that for me in theater was also difficult because it was a shared language especially when you work with the same people all the time so you need to find a strategy to create a new language to listen differently and here at this moment it's happening more spontaneously just because of yeah two different ways of approaching the rehearsal space spectral sonic cartographies is the way that i found to, to name a way of um, researching about specific places how i'm making these cartographies is not only about the um, the on the one hand on the human cartography so how humans live, live and exist in those places but also not only about how um, nature with a lot of quotation marks exist there and not only about how humans and nature interact but also how other presences and forces keep re-existing keep coming back as ghosts and especially how these ghosts re-emerge in, in 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 this relationship between human and nature and ways to listen to a river i think is the most clear example of this that can be a bit um, 
difficult to understand what I what I'm calling ghosts. Uh, I'm researching different rivers. The first river was the river Limay in Patagonia, where I'm from, in the city. Well, I'm from the city of Neuquén, but the river Limay is longer. And in that river, when you start to to listen to it, and when I, what I mean listen about listening is not only going and literally listening to it <laughs> and making few recordings and re-listening to it and what we, we can hear in the sound spectrum, but also start to listen to what is not present in, in that sonic spectrum. So, and but that are operating there. Um, for instance, the absence or presence of bird birds singing. There are not really a lot of birds in the in a, oh, another river, for instance, in the river uh, Salado in the province of of Buenos Aires, in the the center of Argentina. Oh, another river that I researched. If you do field recordings there, there is not a lot of density of birds <laughs> singing, singing there. And then you start that open a question, why I'm listening there and it's quite silent, but at the same time, it's in the middle of the of, of a field. So, and then you, I, that open a question, I research, why is that happening that? And I discovered two possible answers to the low density of bird life. In the one is the use of agrochemicals that affects the whole uh, feed, uh, food chain of, of the birds. And in that specific moment where I was doing the, the field recordings also was in the midst of a huge drought. So you have these um, two events coexisting, and then you have a high, high mortality of, uh, of birds. And then, and of course, that is it's present and it's not present in the field recording. It's appearing as, as a ghost. And then that question opened another questions that are more like, okay, what? How come that agrochemicals are used in particular in this? And how come that the drought has a, such a, an impact in these fields? And that bring the question hundreds of years ago or 150 years ago, when that river was um, first, that river used to be the, the the border of Argentina to the south, to the south of that river was um, indigenous land. And that was the first goal of uh, conquering of the new Argentinian state to conquer, to cross that river and to bring that, that land into production. And since the beginning, because this river had its own dynamic of floods and drought, the, 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 the goal was to, control that and when so to control that it, that implied first of all the exterminate a genocide killing people and secondly 150 years of continuous uh, construction of canals constructions to try to to control the river so there are no floods and then, of course, there is a period of no, no longer period of no rain, and the effects of the drought are devastating because the, the, the land does not have any resources to, to deal with that lack of, there are no lagoons, so there are no reservoirs of water. Everything is designed so the water can run quickly out of the, the fields, and then the effects, uh, yeah, are terrible. So you can feel how in that field recording, 
there were absences and presences. There are certain things and certain absences, but those absences, those silences are present. And, and for me, those are, are the goals, how these events of the past keeps operating in the present. Um, and some and these goals and then appears as a yeah as a goals appear and sometimes goals are nice but most of the time they tell they tell us the, that they are present in a very tragic way like a huge drought with a super high mortality uh, of the of animals and birds and plants and terrible effect for the Argentinian economy. So with all this information, I, it's, it's my way of my mapping, of creating this map of what does it, what is that place? What, what forces are operating? Ensemble Modelo 62 was very much present in the whole process of, of the creation of ways to listen to a river because they were com conversation partners. At the beginning, we, we had the desire to work together and that was coming from, from friendship and yeah, and said, I think we can work together. And in parallel, I was trying, I had these concerns in relationship with, um, ecological collapse and the historical political origins of that and the interaction. And I was not sure how to approach that, how to make a piece about that. And we had in during the pandemic, especially, so we had the desire and was not really possible to work yet because not yeah, the world was a, the world was in a halt. So through those conversations, even before having any peace, was more a conversation, of, okay, how we can collaborate, how this uh, project started to take shape, in, first in my mind, and then more conceptually and more in writing. Um, and firstly, this idea of a sonic spectral cartographies um, appear, and I think it, at the moment it was very interesting for me, but then at the same time, uh, in conversations with the, with, the, with the ensemble, there was a need from them to say, okay, but may, maybe we can be more specific. And that is always a challenging question when you are trying to create something because it's like, I mean, <laughs> you have the feeling that you are very specific, but of course for the others, that is, <laughs> might not be a reality. Um, so I, I, I came to say, okay, let's, let's go to, to a place that I know very well. Let's go back there. And let's dive in this story that, that was the first river. And that first river was, I, I create the music and the piece, and not in collaboration with the, with the ensemble later, like was just my, an autonomous production, but very much inspired by these conversations with the ensemble. And then, um, yeah, we had some working sessions uh, with um, Ian Willem, with the cello. Um, we, we, we had, there was a presentation involved with that, but then got canceled because of uh, COVID. Um, but then it was a very, it was a beautiful piece. And now we are entering this. Then last year we entered the second phase with the second river with the Salado, the one that I was talking before about the drought. And now we are entering this third phase uh, with the Fecht in the Netherlands. So I, I think that 
in a different way, but was very similar to how I worked in the past with the, my own ensemble back in Argentina, or ensemble of actors in that case, um, that the material was coming from conversations within our group. And here, in a totally different way, but also was coming like, say, okay, I have this idea. What do you think about this? There was a feedback, they can come back, exploring further, and so on. We're going to present it in September at Haldiamos uh, Festival. It's the, it's the triptych. We're going to present the three rivers. So it's a it's a whole, but are three pieces in the that are independent. We present uh, the first, where I'm now here. <laughs> um, the second one is the uh, Limay, the my hometown river, and the third one is the Salado uh, River. That uh, Salado, we already made a presentation last year in Head House. Um, so now it's uh, the three rivers together. In the show, the, the video is it's very, very important. The, like the 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 the, the piece. Well, the three pieces are this relationship between the images and the music. The video is um, processed live, so it's like it's performed. It's, a, it's, it's another instrument. And I'm working with Juan Fernandez Gebauer, who is an um, Argentinian filmmaker that uh, is based in Berlin. And we have worked together already for 10 years. And he, our way of working is he's alongside the, the process of researching. So we make interviews and we do this listening um, practice. And alongside that, he's collecting images and a material and, we, and then that is process life in a way in parallel how also the sound produced by the musicians like is process and then uh, re specialize it's a para it's, it's a very similar process what he's doing with the with the images um, something that we didn't try before was to have a live feed um, for the in this third iteration it's going to be the live feed also um, we are still exploring how that will work First of all, as, as the piece is a triptych, I, I, I'm happy that each um, piece reflects the different spirits of the river or the, the, the so, and that will bring the audience very different musical experience. Um, with the Limay, for instance, and because it's so much related not only with the river, but my own personal experience of being born there and seeing the development of, of this region, it has a very emotional content and the form, uh, and it's a solo performance. So it's a very, has a lot of uh, emotion in there. Um, and then with the, with the Salado, although, that there is a lot of uh, sadness, in, sadness in what is happening in with that river. Also, it has a lot of groove and has a lot of uh, power because these dynamics of floods and drought. So, and it's a groovy river. And so, also the the the, the that that piece is very. I, I think it's very powerful and brings a lot of energy. Um, in the room, like re it's a really moving, groovy uh, experience. And that's why we also put it at the end because it's in a way, it has certain darkness in it, but also a lot of energy to, to, to a lot of movement. It's, I think it's, it's almost, you want to almost dance to it. Um, it's not a dance piece, but uh, almost. <laughs>
it has a lot of power and a lot of um, groove in it. Um, and then with the, the, the effect, the piece I'm working now, although it's not finished, um, it's a very contradictory river. It's a river that is peaceful and beautiful in the surface, but it's full of, um, yeah, this beauty has uh, blood in, in its roots. And also um, in the present, there is a lot of tension. And, and, and for instance, 60% of the water at the beginning of the river is coming from the sewers. So you see all these beauties, but also it's coming from the sewers of the city of Utrecht. So this uh, piece is very, it has these elements. It's peaceful and, and contemplative in a way, but also there are certain disturbance present. There is something that brings certain discomfort. Um, that is how I am experiencing this river now. That is, I guess it's very beautiful. You want to go there biking and looking to the water, but then you know, or I know now all this history about the river, all the war that was present also, all the, I know, I don't want to make a history <laughs> of the river now, but they, they are present in the space and in the sound and in the, there are a lot of tension and violence present there, still today. You, you can see traces of, of war and etc. So I think that that is, and we are going to start with that piece. It's, be it's beautiful, but also unrestful. And I think, yeah, that is what, uh, the audience will experience. This conversation, the conversation about how the historical development of capitalism is responsible of the ecological collapse that we are experiencing at this moment is the central conversation. And we cannot have one without the other, I think. And of course, a musical or performance piece, it has a, 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 a small power to change those dynamics, but at the same time, I think it's inviting to, to that conversation, the piece. And, and I think that that is already a, a lot, or as much I can do at this moment. So, I think this is the, the subject that we need to be talking now and how, yeah, how the, to be more specific, the colonial development of capitalism destroyed the world. Um, and I think that that discussion is very urgent and very important. Um, and I hope that the peace can inspire to have that conversation. Of course, the, 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 the aesthetical experience is about that. It's about a certain enjoyment or the senses, but I hope that it can also inspire to talk that about this. <laughs>